All right. So now that it's returned to its full roundness and it's pliable, what you want to do is you want to take this clamp and align it up with the end. And you want to go about that far down the end and you want to sandwich this whole thing from the point to the end. And what you need to do is then apply pressure. So I'm going to be using my clamps. So you want to make sure that this is all centered as much as possible. So you can see what I've got here. So what's going to happen is once this is cooled down a little bit, I'm going to take my clamps off, then re-clamp it. And then I'm going to heat this back up and then smash it flat. So I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so here I've got it reclamped, and I'm just going to heat this section up and then flatten. So now what I'm doing is flattening this out. So once it's flattened out, you see we've got a taper up here. So now that we've got that, you just want to let it, now that we've got that, you just want to let it cool. And then we're going to go ahead and cut this free. All right, so now that you've gotten both tips tapered like this, you want to go ahead and cut right along that line. So once you've cut that, then you want to go and round it off and sand it smooth. So I'm going to do that and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so here we go. The tips are finished, as you can see. So now what we want to do is measure about half an inch or so from the end that's where you want to cut your string knots. So I'm going to be using this tile saw. You can use an uh, eighth inch file. And you want to cut your knots so that they come around the tip of the bow. But you want to be careful. You want to make these knots deep enough for the string to sit and not slip off. But you don't want to cut into the pipe where this is just going to peel right off. There we go. So now I'm going to do that to the other side, and then we're going to string this up for the first time. My neighbor's doing a little bit of construction outside, so I decided to bring the video indoors for right now. Now, this is a polypropylene rope, and if you need a string for you know a bow like this, or you want to make a bow, but you don't want to buy a string, or you don't want to make an actual string, you can use rope. Now what you want to look for is poly rope, either polyester or polypropylene. Polyester is better because it's got better abrasion resistance, it's got less stretch, and it's more UV resistant. 
but polypropylene will work as well. And that's what I've got here. You want to stay away from nylon because nylon will stretch quite a bit. Even if you pre-stretch it, it will actually stretch when you don't want it to and your arrows will be a little slower. Your bow will be a little slower. Now what you want to look for is diamond braided poly rope. And you want either 532nd or 316. You want it to be a little smaller than a quarter of an inch. That way it will fit in pretty much all of the standard, you know, uh, standard knocks for arrows. And it's not incredibly large. This is uh, 532nd. This is a good, good all around size. Paracord is just a hair thinner than this. So, let me just see so you have a reference. And this stuff is fairly inexpensive. You can find it white. Um, different stores carry different colors. At the local hardware store down the street, they carry it in, I believe, pink, orange, and neon green. And I got this from Lowe's. They have purples, blues, pinks, white, so just different colors. Now to string your bow, what you want to do is really simple. We're just tying an overhand knot. So make a loop, tie an overhand knot. So you bring it down and around, bring this loose end through, and pull. You don't want your loop to be too big, so just tighten that up. Then you slip that onto one knot. Then you bring it around. And now this rope, even though it's low stretch, it will stretch out at first. This isn't pre-stretched. So what you want to do is measure about four inches from the end. Make another loop. Tie another knot. Okay. So now that that knot's tied, you put the loop on the bottom limb here, or the other limb here, and I'm just stepping over the bow. And here we go. So you can see the brace height is kind of high on this. Let's see if I. Here it is. So here's the bow strung up. If you can see, if you've seen the movie, the shape of this bow is pretty close. One of the things I like to mention is that in the movie, this bow, the bow she's using, has a really high brace height to it. So if you want to mimic that, you can. If you don't, what you do is when we tie this loop at four inches down, tie the loop at three inches, and you'll get a roughly six inch brace height. But this is not bad. I'd say about seven and a half inches, which is still a good size brace height. It's not too high. So here it is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give this a final sanding and then I'm going to apply the stain with a paper towel. Alright, so just wanted to show this bow to you guys before I put the finish on it. Here it is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some wood stain on this and just stain this whole thing. I'm going to go do that and I'll show you what that looks like.